Joins by phone is former LAPD homicide detective Mark Furman, who has been down here, in fact, standing exactly where I'm standing. Mark, um, did you listen to the in, the uh, interview with Clint, who shared a house in June with K with Casey's boyfriend and with her? I, I did, Greta. And your thoughts? Well, you know, you have you have this group of people. That, you know, they're they're sharing the house, and and Kaylee's there, and then she isn't there. Then all of a sudden, there's a timeline where you, she is just totally absent. They don't see her whatsoever. And I think that's the most important piece of that information. It, it verifies the timeline that the police are working off of. And, and that's what's most important. Uh, the parts about she's a good mother, we hear that time and time again from suspects' families where the suspect turns out to be the relative of the victim. So. I'm sorry, but the only thing I'm focused on, and the only thing I really care about, is when the child went missing and what the mother says about that day. And she has yet to do anything except for lie about that day, June 16th. Mark, I just cannot. The thing that is so distressing is the mother sitting in jail and apparently, according to the sheriff's department, hindering the investigation, unwilling to provide information. So naturally, everybody's enormously suspicious of her. She claims that the child has been kidnapped. Well, no, no one better than the FBI to help find that child. Uh, so it, it's, it's curious uh, what's going on in that woman's head. Well, I don't think it's curious at all. She has nothing to gain by, by saying what her part was in the child's disappearance and or death. Well, why would she come forward and uh, incriminate herself? And I'll tell you, Greta, there's a way to get around this. Once the Sheriff's Department has any forensic evidence that shows that, that uh, Kaylee Anthony was in the trunk of that vehicle, they simply, now they have enough where they can actually fire some, file some level of murder charges on Casey Anthony. They call a grand jury and they compel grandparents to talk and talk about what they know, the brother Lee to talk about what they know, and every other person in print that Casey Anthony has had contact with. And until that time, we're going to be working with a group of people that either doesn't know, aren't willing to tell, or they're lying. Well, the interesting thing, uh, we have a segment coming up with, uh, the, apparently the authorities are checking the uh, the inside of the of the trunk to see whether or not the air reflects that there'd been a decomposing body in there and we have an expert coming up who explained that process but like the other forensic evidence that truly is you know something that uh, can be quite damning we also have Greta, let me tell you something about decomposing tissue decomposing tissue that still has the all the organs inside the body it's it is unmistakable it is unmistakable and cops know it People in the military know it. People in the medical field know it. Pathologists and, know it. And it's not a piece. And, and of course, uh, you, you filter that or you uh, fold that into the uh, forensic results, which are not back yet. And uh, we anxiously await those. Mark, thank you. Thanks, Greta. When the story broke that Kaylee was missing, we were all just like, what? You know, how do, how do we not know? And especially with the first date that was said was June 9th, uh, uh, her missing, you know, I thought back right away and I had seen Kaylee after June 9th. And that's what I told investigators right away that I had definitely seen Kaylee after June 9th. So I knew that date was not true. Between June 16th and July 1st when you moved out, was Casey still coming to see Tony and spending the night? Yes, and it became more frequent in being almost every single night she was staying there. Kaylee was never there anymore. We always asked her, you know, where's Kaylee at? Oh, she's with her grandparents or she's at the beach with a nanny. Did she ever mention Zaneda Gonzalez? No, not once. Never heard that name at all. And she did tell me a story about the father of Kaylee that does not seem to be true. Which was? Um, that the father died on <laughs> in a car accident on the way to one of Kaylee's birthday parties. When she told you this, she looked you right in the eye and tell you this? Yes, she did. And not for one second did you suspect her? Nope. Wouldn't you be surprised if somebody that was hanging out with you and your friends, like, all of a sudden her daughter's missing and she's out partying? Meaning on the 20th, when the pictures. Were you there that night? Yes, I was. Do you remember being on the 20th, there on the 20th? Yes, I, I do. Do you remember who took the pictures? Yes, I do. Uh, was she having a good time the 20th? Yes, she was. Nothing peculiar? Nothing peculiar, no.
How important a witness might Clint House be? Let's bring in the panel. Joining us live from a Westchester County DA, Judge Janine Pirro, and criminal defense attorneys Ted Williams and Jeff Brown. I should say former judge, but soon to be TV judge. All right, Janine, um, is Clint House going to be an important witness? Extremely important, Greta, because what he does is he captures um, Kaylee and Casey together and talks about how she disappears from the scene as, as, as uh, Kay, Casey is spending night after night with Tony. So they're increasing their dating relationship. Kaylee is disappearing into the background. Casey is lying and partying all along the way. So what we've got is a timeline now, Greta, of you know frantic calls by Casey to her parents on the 16th and the 17th, a relationship that's blossoming with Tony at about the same time, looking for a shovel on the 17th, and then out partying by the 20th. I think it's all over on the 20th. I'll take issue with one thing, and I'll go to Jeff on this. Jeff, I don't think the phone records, at least right now, mean a lot. If you look at my phone records, they, they might look a little bit like that. But I thought when Clint said that, that, Kaylee said, that Casey said Kaylee was with the grandparents, and the grandparents have told us they haven't seen her since the 16th, I thought that was particularly damning for Casey. Well, I, I couldn't disagree more here on this particular issue. If the trial is one of whether she's lied, yes, he's a very relevant witness all of this is going to come in. But if the trial is that the child, there's child neglect here, keep in mind that they have to prove that Kaylee's mental and physical health has not been maintained. And I don't know of a single witness, including Judge Perro, that can come in here and without guessing say what the mental or physical health of this child is. And, and if they can't say that, that, then you can't prove neglect. And oh my the, goodness, however, the, however, the, the one big problem, though, go to Ted, is, is when those forensic tests come back. What do the forensic well, that, tests show? That there was a decomposing yeah. body? A that's a murder. Okay. Well, when they, when, but when they go to that, a murder, that's different. We're talking child neglect key. where we don't have the answers yet. And, and that's the key. Ted? When and if that forensic evidence come back, I, they're going to race to the courthouse to charge her with murder, I believe. What you have here is a pathological... Uh, pathological habitual liar. Just think about this. When she met But do you this have guy more? Too, do you have the problem is, it. is that do you have more? And that's the bigger question. You can find Well you have also a for, motive. But, but do you, you have, have more? a motive motive you have a motive here and the motive could be that's that right. she wanted to be with this boyfriend at all and costs. You know what that could be, but right now that's that's all our imaginations. Right. That's the problem. So they still but, have to prove something. They have to prove a crime occurred, right Janine? Yeah, absolutely. They have to prove a crime occurred. And there is no more perfect example of neglect than a mother who has no idea where her daughter is and isn't even looking for her. And don't tell, tell, tell me, Jeff, for one that. second if she is. That. She is tell saying that this kid was kidnapping. She's nowhere near a phone waiting. She's on the phone in jail saying, why is everybody so terrified? So what's her physical mental condition right daughter. now? This woman Janine, is what's the her physical of and mental condition mother. right now? What's Kaylee's mind? physical and All mental? Right, Jeff, of course not. What is Kaylee's physical and mental condition right now? We it don't know. It can't be good she if she's not with her own mother. Jeff, You're guessing. Me, That's Jeff, the whole point. You have to prove it beyond Jeff, a reasonable Jeff, doubt. Jeff, and I could. Let me ask you a question, Jeff. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> TV court. Under the, state, under the law in Florida, is abandonment of a child child neglect? Yes, it can, it can be, it can be. Well, if that's you're saying problem, that by, because, if, if you're saying the problem, because if you're that the abandonment of the child has deprived Jeff. the child of physical or mental uh, health. If well, that's the case, yes. But we don't know where, where the I want to say something here. Is. All right, Janine, Jeff you made a seconds. comment. Go. Uh, uh, Jeff made a comment. You're out of line, Jeff. I sat in the family court and ruled on these cases day in and day out. I'm this not is in classic court, child neglect. It it's as a class. family Jeff, court judge, Jeff, Jeff. But there's no proof you know to what? that. And, and, and you know what? The proof in. is all there. Where? All right, oh, Janine, everybody. All right, Janine and Jeff, I got to go. Jeff, you will get your chance to uh, to get back at Janine another night because we got to <laughs> go. But anyway, continue it on your cell phones. Coming